Hello and welcome to our online service. I'm so glad you could join us this week. We're going to start off our service with a time of worship, but first we're going to pray. Dear God, I pray that you strengthen, restore and inspire us with your word today. I pray that you fill us with your love and your peace for the week ahead of us. In Jesus' name, Amen.
Hey, Mike. Oh, hi, Othniel. Have you seen Mike? No, I haven't seen him. <sighs> okay, I'll go and... Othniel, are you upset about something? Oh, I just overheard my uncle laughing and saying that I don't look a thing like my family. And where did I come from? Oh, oh no. And that hurt your feelings, didn't oh, it? Yeah. Oh. I don't matter anyway, Tina. I'm nobody. I'm nothing. I'm just inferior to everyone. Oh, uh. Othniel. Now that's simply not true. Can I tell you something about me? Uh -huh. Not because I think that my problems are more important than yours oh. or to make it about me, right. but because I think it might help you. Is that okay? Okay. Yes, I. that's fine. What do you think about my nose? Uh, your nose? It's okay, I guess. Well, when I was a little kid, my nose was a huge issue. Oh, oh, why? Because no one in my family had my same nose. Oh. And I always thought that I wasn't part of my family because of it. It made me feel less than everyone else. Oh. It wasn't my mom and dad's fault. Uh -huh. They absolutely told me that I was their kid. And if you saw them, you'd know I really was. Yeah. Yeah. But that didn't make a difference. Well, what did you do? Well, I'll get to that in a minute. Okay. But do you know how much God loves you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. God loves me. Yeah. Well, 1 John 3, 1 says, See what great love the Father has lavished on us, huh. that we should be called the children of God. Oh. And that is what we are. Oh. The reason the world does not know us is that it didn't know Him. Oh. Do you know what the word lavished means? It means uh, a lot, right? Well, y yes and no. Huh. Okay, so here's my next question. Do you like ice cream? Yeah, I like ice cream. Of course, everyone likes ice cream. And what type of toppings do you like on your ice cream? Hmm. Well, let's see. I like chocolate sauce and marshmallow ooh, and whipped cream and chocolate shavings and pineapple and strawberries and, 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 and okay, peanut butter okay, okay, and, okay. and, and, and caramel. Okay, I like pretty, all of that. I like all of that. Pretty soon you won't have any ice cream left. Uh, -huh. uh um What's in the bucket? Never mind. We'll get that we'll get to that in a minute. Mm -hmm. Do you only put a little bit of toppings on your ice cream? Uh nope. I put tons of toppings on my ice cream. So you lavish your ice cream with toppings. That's what lavish means, oh. over and above what would normally happen. Oh. God lavishes his love and his grace on us because he thinks we're worth it. Um, okay. Uh, now, God chose to love me because I'm his favorite. What? Yes, uh, I, I suppose you would be, but I... Don't be sad, All right. jealous, or upset, Othniel. Because you're his favorite, too. Oh. We all are. Oh. God is so big that he can have more than one favorite person. Really? Yes. Oh. God lavishes his love on us like you lavish chocolate sauce on mm. ice cream. Ah, <laughs> yeah. Oh. Tina, um, you're tipping that bucket. There, there's water in there, isn't there? I can know. I can tell. I don't want to get wet. God hasn't given us just a drop of his love or grace oh. or just a thimbleful of his love and grace. Uh -huh. God has lavished his love and grace on us. Tina, stop! Wait, wait, stop, stop, stop! stop. You're going to get me wet! Oh, I don't want to get wet! Gonna, the, 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 Tina, stop tipping that bucket! I'm going to get wet! God has poured his love on us. Are you ready? No! Othniel, 
It doesn't matter if my nose isn't the same as anyone in my family, although when my youngest nephew was born, he oh. had it too. Oh. And it doesn't matter if you look like anyone else in your family. God has chosen to love us and make us a part of his family. You matter to God. Hmm. God lavished his love on me, and I'm his favorite, am I? Yep, that's ah. exactly right. Yay! Now, that doesn't mean that you're not going to feel sad or upset, but it does mean that you know that to God, you are important. Huh. I will think about that and speak to God about it, Tina. Thank you so much for talking to me. I feel so much better now. Yay! No problem, Akio. If you see Mike, will you tell him that I'm looking for him, please? Uh-huh. I sure will. Bye now. Bye. 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 <laughs> Bye, Althea! And bye to all of you. Thank you so much for watching. Hey, well, good afternoon once again, and thanks so much for tuning in to our online service. This is Mental Health Awareness Week, and today I want to talk to you about your value. Do you appreciate how much value you have? You really do. You, you know, so often people find themselves in a dark place in their mental, emotional well-being because it, it, it seems within that they feel that they have no longer any purpose in this life. They have lost value, all sense of worth, perhaps because of things that have taken place, you know, situations that, that have, have, have came about, that they feel that they've let the side down. Maybe you're one of those people that I'm talking about today. I've been there many times myself, and uh, it's, it's easy to feel that... Um, you're, you're just an inconvenience, that people would be happier if you were no longer um, messing up their lives. It's easy to feel that you just can't do anything right, and it's easy to, to lose hope in any sense of purpose in your life. Of course, there can be other reasons that we find ourselves suffering from depression and such, and we've heard, sadly, in the last year that as many as one in three males have come to suffer from depression at some level or another. So 
uh, I want you to know that it, it might seem like of small help to you in, in, in the first instance, but I want you to know that you're not alone. That there are many out there who are struggling also. But more importantly, I want you to know today that you are of great worth. You are not alone because God is for you. And, and if, if he is for you, then you have the greatest help available in this world. Of course, there are, there are doctors out there. There are um, specialists who can help us in our struggling. And we're being well, well advised to, to look to them at times. But I simply want to, to tell you today that the greatest help, the greatest help that is available to man in any given situation comes from the maker of heaven and earth. Yeah, the living God. He knows your friend. He, he knew you in your mother's womb. Um, I, I, I recall reading in Matthew's gospel of the, the disciples um, being encouraged by, by God as they were setting out into this world um, not to worry. Yeah, not to worry. He was, he was really um, embedded in their minds how valuable they were and are to the Father. And he said to them, look, you know, there's not a sparrow falls from the sky to the ground that um, your heavenly father isn't aware of what has happened to them. Um, but, but how much more value do you have to the father, he says. He says, the very hairs on your head are numbered. Hear that today. Yeah, the, the, the father, the, the maker of heaven and earth has numbered the very hairs on your head. And if he's concerned for the sparrow that falls from the sky, then how much more concern does he have for you? He loves you with an everlasting love. You are of great value. So please just journey with me for a, a few minutes today as we read this, this story that again just embeds the, the love that the Father has for us and the value that you have to him. And this will help you greatly to go on in these days. It's the story that's known as the Good Samaritan and we're reading from Luke's Gospel in chapter 10 and um, from verse 30 where it says a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him and went away leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road and when he saw the man he passed by on the other side. So too a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he travelled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. And he went, he went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. And then he, he put that man on his donkey, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. And the next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense that you may have. That's a wonderful story, isn't it? It's a great story, and a parable is a story that's not literally true, but, but where God is trying to embed into our minds a deeper meaning, a higher purpose, you might say. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help you just in these minutes to, to get that. There are different characters in the story. We read about a, a priest, um, somebody who had a, a religious form. And in many ways, you could say all of the, um, the ability and resources to help. Um, and, and certainly in his own estimations, had all the knowledge. But yet, what did he do with that? He, he didn't, he didn't um, do anything when the moment arrived, at least, did he? He, he walked on by. He walked on on by and um, perhaps in his own estimations he was you know self-righteous you know he was too filled with his own self-importance or or too busy uh, i don't know but the fact is he he passed on by and sometimes we can be too busy hey even us church folks out there us christian folks we can be too busy we can be caught up with church things but not be about the business of the kingdom itself and wow, well, if, if that's the case, hey folks, we need a reality check because we're out of step with the love of God. Another character in the story that we found was the, the Levite. Um, he was a guy that, that uh, in, in biblical times, he was a guy that was brought up in the law. He knew all of the rules 
in the regulations. He, he knew the, you know, the letter of the law, what, what should be done. Uh, but again, we, we can be well versed in what should be done, but, but how well versed are we at outworking what needs to be done? There can be, again, all sorts of reasons why we become um, people that are, are boxed in to, to um, again, the life of, and the world of, of knowing what's right, but finding ourselves slow to do something about the needs that are before us. But, you know, again, in reality, if we're going to bore into that, we will find that a lack of intimacy with God himself is the likely problem there. You know, the the Lord Jesus um, spoke to the churches in Revelation, didn't he? And he challenged one of these churches about being, you know, um, well-versed in what was right. Effectively, that was what he was saying, you know. Um, and, and you've got this going for you and that going for you, but you've lost all sense of your first love. You've fallen away from your love with me. And, you know, if we truly love God, um, the, the letter to first uh, or first John shows us um, we cannot say that we love God who we do not see if we fail to outwork our love towards our neighbor who we do see. And that is love. That is love. Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your might, heart, mind, soul and strength. And second to it, you must love your neighbor as yourself. So knowing what is right is great. But it is the love of God that, that takes that knowledge and brings us to the place of compassion, brings us into the place of action. Um, the, the Levite had, had all sorts of family rights and, uh, y y you know, traditions going on in his world. But again, I need to remind you today, y you know, your, your family um, allegiance to the faith, your attendance at church, it's all great. But, but, but it's all about what you are going to do for Jesus in these days. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll come to that in a, a moment or two. But the third person in the story that relates to us and speaks into our lives and shows us our value today is the person called the Samaritan. And he represents the grace of God. He, he represents what we would call the unmerited favour. I don't know if you've ever found yourself in a situation that you can't get out of. And again, sometimes we find ourselves struggling mentally and emotionally because of such experiences. Um, I, I remember as a young lad before I was a Christian being out for the night and I'd spent all of my money on, uh, on alcohol and I found myself in a location which was a long way from home. I only had half of the money um, in order to get a taxi back home. And I remember it was freezing cold. I remember in desperation calling to the taxi company and, and, and pleading my case and, and asking for their help. And uh, in, a, in, me, in their mercy, they sent out a taxi and, uh, and took me home. How grateful I was for that. And, you know, when we are down in our luck, when we are struggling at the depths of our, in the depths of ourselves, um, it's great, you know, when somebody comes and, puts an arm around our shoulder and uh, makes us feel a little better in the moment, but it doesn't get us, you know, from where we are to where we need to be, does it? What we really need is for somebody to come and to sit down beside us and, and, and yeah, yeah, co console us in the moment, but then say to us, hey, we're going to get through this. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help you to get out of this mess. I'm going to help you get through this. Sometimes in life, it's, it's, it's hard to find or think where somebody um, could come from that's going to help us in such a way. We sometimes feel abandoned and that there's nowhere to turn. But the Samaritan shows us that in God, there is somebody that is an all the way home saviour. Somebody that is going to come alongside us if we'll allow them into our lives, who will not just pick us up, but they'll lead us home. We see in the Samaritan a love that is unprecedented. Firstly, we see, again, a love that steps in. When the world seemingly is walking on by, we see a love that steps in. 
again in First John we read, and this is love, not that, that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sin. You know, 2,000 years ago, love stepped into this world. And the greatest pain, the greatest anxiety that we can carry is the knowledge and awareness of our sinfulness and how it separated us from God. But, but love has stepped in there and paid the price at the cross of Calvary that we might be forgiven and find everlasting life through Christ Jesus, the Son. And the Samaritan stepped in. He didn't just show concern, but he stepped into the middle of the road. He stepped in and down in to the mess and the difficulty and the danger of that situation. This was a place, a thoroughfare that was known for bandits and, and robbery and, and murder. Um, but yet this guy seemingly had no concern for his own well-being because love pursues, doesn't it? Love pursues even in challenging and difficult circumstances. And we see secondly that love covers. Love covers. The, 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 the Samaritan took the, the um, beat up man from the streets and placed him in his donkey and took him to the inn and he paid the price for him to find full recovery. Love covers the cost. Love covers the cost. You you might feel, again, so hopeless in your situation because not only can you not navigate your way out, you feel absolutely powerless to do anything um, to rectify your situation. But I want to give you good news today that it's in our weakness that the grace of God really goes to work. Uh, the Bible says God's grace, his, his strength and help is more than sufficient for us that his power, that's what his grace is. It's a power to save, a power to bring mercy, forgiveness and strength to our lives, even everlasting life, that that grace is sufficient. His power is made perfect in our weakness. So yeah, you might feel hopeless and absolutely weak and without strength or idea, but if you would turn in your weakness to Jesus today, that he would come like the Samaritan did in this story and he will cover the cost. He will bring the strength that you do not have. He will bring the direction that you cannot find. But love covers in other ways. Again, I mentioned a moment ago how Jesus stepped into this world and its pain and into the mess of our sin and brought the answer and the salvation that we needed through his death for us upon the cross. And you know, the Bible says that that love, this, this love, it covers a multitude of sin. You might feel like there's no way back. I can't rectify all the wrongs and, you know, the stuff that's went on in my life. I, I want to tell you that before God, there is a way back. You can turn away from that stuff and you can enter into a new life as if that stuff had never happened before. Of course, there are always circumstances to our choices, but before God, you can know a new slate. You can be born again. And there's a, another famous parable, a story of the prodigal son. And when he comes back away from his mess and mistakes and comes back home to his father, the father places a robe upon him. And it's, it's symbolic. It shows of the, the righteousness, the, the, the purity of God covering over completely the, the mess and stains of our past lives, of our foolish mistakes, of our sin. Love covers. Calvary, it covers it all. A multitude of sin. You might feel like, oh, I've done too much. I've, um, I've sunk too far. But no, Calvary, the work of Calvary where Jesus died for you and for me, it covers it all. So we've seen how love steps in where others walk by. We've seen how love covers. It, it, it pays the price that we cannot pay and it covers the complete mess and shame and pain that we may carry. And lastly, I want to tell you today that love includes where we have maybe been excluded, where we have been shunned and um, find no help um, in this life and nowhere to go. 
we find a place to go in Jesus. We find someone to turn to and someone who will never leave us nor forsake us. We see in the Samaritan a love that knows no limits. As was mentioned earlier, there are two main parties, two main, um, again, people groups in this story, the Jews and the Samaritans. They wouldn't have given each other the time of day, but yet we find, by tradition that is, um, but yet we find amazingly in this story, not just one looking the way of the other, but one stepping down into the mess of the other, paying the price that was needed to bring full restoration to the pain and mess of their lives and, and, and including them and including them, embracing them into their world. You know, I've come to realize that there is something worse in this life than everything falling apart. And, and that is when everything's falling apart and there's nobody there to turn to. When, when again, people just seem to walk on by or people are too busy or they simply do not care or have the love that is needed to actually make a difference. That's the, that's the thing, isn't it? And uh, we read, as was mentioned in the, the kids' video that we enjoyed today from Mike and Tina, from the, the letter again to First John, see what great love the Father has lavished upon us, that we should be called the children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Um, see what great love the Father has lavished upon us that we should be called the children of God. You know, it, it blows the mind, doesn't it? Again, as was mentioned earlier, I appreciate there are many reasons why we can find ourselves troubled mentally and emotionally. But many is a time we come to such a place, rightly or wrongly, because we feel like we have... We have expended all of the help and the love that was available through people. And, uh, and that, that we find that, rightly or wrongly, that there's, there's nowhere to go. And sometimes that is a literal case. That, that, that we find ourselves cut off, that family don't have time for us, friends don't seem to bother with us anymore. We find ourselves isolated. It, the picture that is always in my mind in this respect is, is of a young orphan in a children's home that, that has no siblings and, and, and is without relationship or any hope in this life. But yet a, a wealthy man enters into that home and doesn't just bring that young boy home for a, you know, a, a respite weekend, but brings him back into his family and doesn't even just give him, um, again, some some respite for a season, but gives him adoption, gives him the family name, gives him the rights of a son. And that's what we find through the love of God and that he brings us not just up to give us a cuddle, not just up out of our mess for a, for a moment or two, but brings us into his bosom, brings us into that place of sanctuary, that place of refuge and strength and belonging and gives us the right to be known as his children. The Bible says, as many as believe in him, as many as call upon his name, to them he gives the right, the power to be known as the children of God. It's phenomenal, isn't it? It's phenomenal. And the Samaritan's love knows no limits. It, it shows how um, God is no respecter of person, how the it was the Samaritan that reached again into the world of the Jew. And you need to know today that you, you might feel in your own estimations a million miles from God. Why would God care about me? He's showing you in this story today. You might be in a, in a people group or place of thinking that is at a polar extreme from what you might think a Christian should be or, or somebody that, that God would care about. But this, this story shows us that... There is no polar extremes when it comes to the love of God. He sees all the same. He loves all the same. That's why Jesus said God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever would believe in him would not perish but find everlasting life. God so loved the world 
doesn't matter who you are, where you've been brought up, what you've got in your pocket, what you've not got in your pocket, what addictions you might be burdened with, what mistakes you've made in your past, what your family name is, what your creed is, what your tribe is, what your ethnicity is. It does not matter. It only matters that you're breathing today and that God gave you that breath. He gave you that life and he loves you. He, is, he loves his creation. He loves you in, in places worse than you, greater than that of the sparrow, which he cares for greatly as it falls from the sky today. He cares for you more significantly. Remember, he's numbered the hairs on your head. So though what the world may pass you by and though nobody seems to want to include you, make time for you or care for you, he cares for you deeply, so much more so than you could ask Think or imagine he wants to bring you into his family. He wants to give you a new name. He wants to give you hope. He wants to give you a new day and set purpose in your heart and set hope in your heart for this life and for the life to come. So where hopelessness has abounded, may now hope come into the center of your being today as you are starting to become aware of the love of God that is presented to you through Christ Jesus the Son. And as we close, I want to just challenge the Christians that are watching with us today that we need to count the cost. We need to count the cost. We need to look at this story uh, and, and, and examine our lives. Uh, are we grudgingly about the Father's business at this time? Are we struggling in our priorities to find time for the Father's business at this time? What is the Father's business? It's to be about the business of loving people. Are we too busy? Um, then we are falling from the place of love, if that's the case. We need to come back to the place of love. This guy was willing to pay the price, whatever the price, in order to bring restoration for the, the, the Jew that had been beat up and left for dead in the road. Are you willing today? Are you willing to serve? Are you willing to care for the, the needs of your community, the people even in your own family? We need to be a people who are willing to pay the price. Jesus said in Matthew 25 that the king will say to those in his right, come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you took care of me. <clears throat> I was in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and take you in or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them, I assure you, whatever you did for the least of these brothers, you did it for me. And then he will also say to those on the left, depart from me, you who are cursed into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you give me nothing to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you didn't take me in. I was naked, yet you didn't clothe me. Sick and in prison, yet you didn't take care of me. Then they too will answer, Lord, when did, you see, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger without clothes or sick or in prison and not help you? Then he will answer them and say, I assure you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you didn't do it for me either. And they will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Paul right into the Galatians says, do not grow weary in doing good for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially those who are in the household of faith. Friends, there are two things I want to say to us, to the church they are watching today as we come to a close. The, the love of God sometimes needs to be rekindled as Paul was appealing to the Galatian church there. Sometimes we grow tired, we get distracted and uh, we need to just get things back in perspective and, and not grow weary in doing good. But we also need to be careful. This is the, the, the second thing and more important thing you might say. We need to be careful to examine ourselves to see that the love of God is actually at work in our lives. If, if it is just normally the case that you're only concerned for your own situation, then friend, 
whether you go to church or not, something is not right there. Because you're little different to the priest and the Levite in the story. You may have a form of religion. You may go to church. You may be able to quote scriptures and pray. But if you don't have love for the people who are being rejected, the people who are addicted, the people who are struggling, the people who need help, whoever those people may be, if there's not compassion in your heart, then there is possibly not the love of God at work in your heart either. You need to cry out to God today. You need to seek his forgiveness today for being proud and hard-hearted, for only being concer concerned with your own situation. And ask him to forgive you and give him uh, and ask him to give you a love for him and a love for the people around you. Jack Hayen said that love is measured by its willingness to be inconvenienced. We see Jesus being more than inconvenienced, but being wholeheartedly committed as he portrays himself in the life of the Samaritan in our scripture passage today. We see the work of an all the way home saviour. The, the, the God who begins a good work in us and is faithful to see that um, work through to completion. The God who goes the extra mile. The God who went to the cross for you and for me. Are you ready to go the distance for him today? Perhaps you need to receive his love and his help today. Perhaps it is that you've, you're have you one of those that has been beaten down. You felt, feel like the guy in the story, lying in the road of life, without help and filled with pain, depressed, and struggling with anxieties and troubles. God is here. He is the ever-present help in times of trouble. And I want to pray for you today. And following um, this service, if, if you need assistance in any way, we want to help you. If you just... Um, get in touch. The contact information is on the screen right now as I'm talking. Just message either the Facebook page or send an email address to that address on the screen right now and uh, we'll get in touch and by the grace of God we'll not just put an arm around your shoulder but we'll help you um, to get back home, to get back that place of strength that is um, available not just because of our human efforts but because God will will help us to help you. But let's begin that journey right now. You can get in touch and please do that. But, but most importantly is that we connect with God, that we get in touch with him. And we're gonna do that now as we pray. Let's, let's close our eyes. Lord, I, I wanna thank you for your example to us and these um, encouragements that we find in your words today. But I wanna pray for people that have been struggling, who have lost their sense of worth and any sense of hope in this life, I pray that you'd come alongside them by your spirit right now and that you would make known your love to them, that you would put your arms around them and that you would set something of hope into their hearts, that they would have um, a reason to go on and that they would know deep within them that it's going to be okay. Lord, protect them. Bring that hope um, to a greater place of strength within them. And Lord, may your peace also be set in their hearts and minds. Lord, I pray that in the days ahead that you'll continue to strengthen them and that you'll put the help around them to help them not just to get up, but to go onwards into a new future, into a better day. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, God bless you. And remember, be sure to get in touch. If there's any way at all that we can help you, we'd love to, to come and, and visit you or talk to you on the phone, message you, whatever's appropriate. But be sure to reach out. Don't suffer in silence.
again for that message. Hopefully we all learned something from that. And maybe it's left you with questions. And if so, feel free to get in touch with us with the details on screen now. Thanks again for joining and we'll see you next week.